can make some guidelines to help you. Yeah. So first thing to do is draw the EKG. So I'll make a little tiny P wave. Just come across, go down for the Q, up for the R, down further for the S, back up to the space line, go across, and then make sure your T is bigger than your P. And longer. And then label those waves. P, Q, R, S, T. That's the first thing you want to do, because this is going to tell you what order of events is going to be happening in the cardiac cycle. Now, I know you don't have a ruler, but you're just going to have to estimate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw myself a guideline through the R. I'm going to put my ruler through that R, and I'm just going to make some dots in a straight line. And this is going to help me know where to draw my love and my rise in blood pressure. So this thing that I drew here, this is, this is a guideline. And then I want you to make another guideline through the T wave, right through the middle of it. There's another guideline. And then I want you to make one more guideline. And the third one is going to be, see the first one is right in the middle of the T wave. The, the third one is going to be between the middle and the ends. So I'm just going to do another one just to the right of the second one. There's the third guideline. You'll see why these will be helpful. Okay, so now you say to yourself, okay, P wave happens, so atria contract. Blood just moves from atria to ventricles. Now we have QRS wave. That's the order for ventricles to contract. So the first thing that happens when these contract is that the AV valves close. So line up the R with sound one. So when you make sound one, you want to make a really tall spike. And, and you want to label this S1, or you can call it love, L-U-B-B. -B. S1 or love. See, so you're, line, you're lining this up with the R because you don't have to get to the S before the ventricles start to contract. So as soon as you get to the R, the ventricles start to contract, and the first thing they do is close the AV valves. Now, right after that happens, the blood's going to open up the semilunar valves and leave the heart. But it doesn't always happen immediately. There's usually a little delay. So notice I'm going to make a little horizontal line where it says blood pressure. And then I'm going to start the rise in blood pressure. Now, how do you know when to make it level off? I mean, see, with blood pressure, see, so you have the <coughs> bottom and then the top. How do you know when to bring it over? That's why the guideline. So start it here. And you want to level it off at the first guideline. See how I just brought it over here and stopped? That's important because we have to keep in mind what the T wave is, top, is telling us. The T wave is saying, okay, ventricles relax. So as soon as you, you reach the middle of the T wave, the ventricles start to relax. Well, what's the first thing that happens? As soon as they relax, blood in the aortic pulmonary trunk fall backwards and close the semi valves. about. So, that's going to lower blood pressure. So now you need to make the blood pressure go down. So make the blood pressure go down. Make it intersect that third guideline, like right here. Then put your sound number two right there. So here's where I'm going to write, draw my duck. And make sure you draw it shorter, because the shorter the, the recording, the, the softer the sound. So this, this one's going to be S2 or duck. So you're seeing that the duck happens before the end of the T wave. <clears throat> and now, because the semilunar valves are like trampolines, remember that trampoline effect? They're either going to dip down, spring up. Because they do that, when they spring back, the blood goes up a little bit, the blood pressure goes up a little bit. That makes the dichotic wave. And then after that, make the blood pressure fall. <clears throat>
and we're done, except for labeling a few things up here. See, if you don't write, if you don't draw these three guidelines, you aren't going to know where to draw the heart cells in relationship to the EKG, nor will you know how to draw the blood pressure curve in relationship to both the EKG and the heart sounds. That's why I'm going to give you rulers on the test so you can draw these lines, but you have to remember where to draw them. Now, let's label parts of our blood pressure curve. What, what's the lowest blood pressure called? Is it systolic or diastolic pressure? Diastolic. Diastolic pressure. So let's label this line diastolic pressure. And we can also label it from this side. It could be labeled on either side. That's the lowest blood pressure in an artery. What are we going to label this, this upper blood pressure right there? Systolic. Yeah. Well, that's systolic pressure. What are we going to call this little triangle? What's that called? Is that called a dichroic wave or notch? Wave. Wave. Think of an ocean where the water goes up. It's a wave. Think of, you know, in a table, a wood table, if you, if you hit it with a knife, you're going to make a notch in it. So when it goes in, it's a notch. When it goes up, it's a, it's a wave. So that would be the dichroic wave. Whereas this thing right here, that's the dichroic notch. Do you see the difference? And so what you should get from this is that when you have the dichroic notch, that happens before the end of the T wave, and that's, that lines up with heart sound too. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Can I uh, see what you have on the bottom for heart sounds? Mm -hmm. And now, when you look back at the graph that you have, it'll make more sense. Because we've just done it. We've just done it live. So you go back to this, you can see, see how they drew a gut, see how they... They've drawn a guideline, like right here, and see how here's the P, no, there's no heart sounds after the P. Then here's the QRS, see right after the R, see that's where your love is. You bring up the guideline, there's a slight, slight delay because it takes time for blood to open the semilunar valves before it leaves the heart. That's what's happening here, and then the blood pressure goes out. So for me, you can line up the rising blood pressure with the R, with the first heart sound. Those things need to be lined up. Then, you see here's the T wave. See, my first guideline was here. Here's their second guideline. They didn't draw this guideline here like I did. So, but if, 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 I, if I draw in my guideline, my middle guideline, see how you go rise in blood pressure, but see how it levels off here when you're at the middle of the T wave? Then you see how the blood pressure falls. But you see, when it intersects that third guideline, then you, that's the dichroic notch. See how it says aortic valve closes? Make sense? That's, isn't that sound number two, duck? So you follow that notch down, there's the duck. And then that valve goes down, goes up, gives the blood a little extra kick. That's why it makes the dichroic wave, and then you're done. And blood pressure then goes down because it's going away from the heart. So now this shouldn't be so intimidating looking. Mm -hmm. And um, on your handout, you should have to off for a second. Um, yeah, you got one of the EKG strips on the front of it. Oh, yeah. Remember this one here? Mm -hmm. Because I know you were trying your best without a ruler to draw what I did. I've given you the hand drawn. Just what we did, here's mine. Yeah. So you have a good copy. Okay, so you should practice drawing this over and over until it's just like this. And then you'll get a lot of points. How many are you going to have? Well, you're going to have to draw all this, yes. Okay, we have one last page to do. Let's go to page 10. <coughs>